flings. In flings, the arms and legs cross with each repetition. Seal claps. Feet and hands come together but do not cross. Jumping jacks, just like a standard jumping jack from elementary school. Rest in peace, Jack LaLanne. Squats. Feet need to be about shoulder width apart. Toes need to be angled out. Look to lead back with the hips and push the knees out while keeping the back flat. Low pogo hops are repeated jumps at a low level. High pogo hops, repeated jumps to a higher level. With the split squat, legs will start at 90 degrees. It's best to set this movement up from the bottom first. Front leg will be at 90 degrees, back leg will be at 90 degrees. You'll need to look to keep your shoulders over your hips. Your trailing leg will track straight down, so the knee will come straight down under the torso. This is good for ironing out any deficiencies between your right and left legs. With the Spider-Man stretch, you'll assume a push-up position, and as you step up towards your hand, look to keep your back flat and hips square. This is a stretch for your groin, or the inside of your leg. With quadruped extension rotation, you'll extend up towards the ceiling and then you'll rotate towards your opposite knee. This helps maintain the extension and rotation of your upper back and spine. With the rocking groin stretch, you'll post a leg out to the side, again keeping your hips and shoulders flat. Each time you rock back, it will be a dynamic stretch for the inside of the thigh or groin. With the push-up plus, you're going to look to keep the elbows tracking about a 45 degree angle to the body and at the top of the movement you're going to protract your shoulder blades and get a little bit of rounding in the upper back to maintain some of the musculature underneath your shoulders. With black burns, your palms will face the ceiling and the back end of the movement and as they sweep above your head they'll rotate to the floor. This movement helps keep your shoulders mobile and the big thing to look for is that you don't arch up to get your face away from the dirty gym floor. Keeping your head more neutral will make a more natural movement. With the supine leg lift, you're going to look to pull your toe in towards your shin and raise your leg up high enough that you don't have rounding in the low back and that you feel a stretch through your calf and hamstring. If you're not extremely flexible, you won't have to lift your leg that high. The bent knee twist, knees will be bent, and you'll just lightly roll side to side and gently touch the side of your thigh to the ground. This would be a stretch for your low back. With the supine hold it, you'll intertwine your fingers behind your knee, pull your toe in towards your shin, and pull your knee in towards your chest, and as you straighten your leg, you'll feel a stretch across your hamstring and calf. There will probably be a little dance at the end of the movement if you do it right. The last movement is glute bridges. With glute bridges, you're going to use your glutes to raise up and get your knees, glutes, and shoulders in line. 
This helps activate the glute muscles for any jumping or running that will occur later.